Hey everyone, today we'll be going over how to build Tesla AI models in under 5 minutes and without any further hesitation, let's get started. The first thing you do is to fully respect the field of AI on a comprehensive level because there have been loads of other people who came before who developed models, developed architectures, developed the fundamentals and foundations for what we now know as a present definition of AI. And we will focus on computer vision models to segment cars for autonomous driving. Here's the structure for how we're going to build a comprehensive AI models today. First thing to do is that we need to get data, the oil and fuel that powers AI models. These are the following resources to be able to get said data sets. Then the next step is data annotation. And CVAT is typically the de facto type of tool for computer vision annotation tasks, but there's also further research, one that I'm particularly writing a paper on for robotic science systems uh, for creating math proofs for 2D to 3D spaces as well. So yeah, I'm just putting it in there. And the reason why we do this is to create an automated JSON file so that way our model can be able to pick up the different coordinates that we put on for our entire different planes of images. Next, we have to select what type of learning we will actually perform because there are different domains in artificial intelligence, particularly dividing up between machine learning, deep learning, and then also the different types of learning, supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised, and there's also transfer learning as well for further research. Next, we need to select a model architecture and we will focus on three custom neural networks for this video, a YOLO V8, a convolution neural network, and a vision transformer. And neural networks have an input and output layer along with hidden layers as well. And each of the hidden layers are comprised of an activation function. And the loss function tells us how well the model is trained. And we use an optimization algorithm to be able to smooth out all the noise so we can get our desired output. And we will stick the reload activation function along with the atom optimizer. All the code is written in Python and built on the PyTorch libraries. Next, we will train our custom models and we will implement batch processing given the fact we have loads of data that we have made from our data set and annotated already. Now, the training process is having the model architectures actually picking up the patterns from our JSON file to understand the pattern recognition so that way if we were to give an untrained image uh, we will be able to actually have the model be able to pick up the probability of chances that we have selected a car or not a car in this case and we will signal the number of epochs that we will have and implement early stopping then we will validate test and back test for all of our models and specifically for the validation set we use it to see how well our model has trained on the training set and common techniques of validation include holdout split k-fold cross validation and stratified cross validation then we have our test set which is used for performance benchmark marking for our given model. And common techniques include A-B testing, intersection and reunion, ODD generalization test, and metrics we include precision recall, confusion matrix, and F1 score, also known as the DICE coefficient. Following types of backtesting include rolling window, anchor backtesting, walk forward analysis, and utilizing Intel's OpenVINO framework to compare other model performances, and they have a phenomenal deep learning workbench that one could be able to use today via Docker. And has a phenomenal interface to be able to work with computer vision models, given the fact that they have an open model zoo that people can play around and actually be able to learn further in depth on. Now, common problems that we may face would be overfitting of the data, where specifically the data is not diverse enough, where the model is able to make out other predictions, depending on what other untrained data has already been implemented for the model to be able to predict. Another problem could be the lack of data that is available. And with that, there will be other outlandish predictions and more data would typically be able to help a given model architecture when training. There's also a concept drift where given a model, and if one is able to have an input and they get something totally different, one aspect could be that the initial training training data has not been taken into account of ever-changing dynamic environments, and there is a lack of diverse data that focuses on the training environments as well. And there can also be the aspect of long training times, mostly due to insufficient hardware, because one, training your stuff locally compared to cloud is going to be a lot faster and way more secure compared to having a way to connection for a given model to train hence PyTorch and local development over Google Colab. Another aspect could be the lack of parameters that are actually used to be able to measure out the different heuristics a neural network could also be able to predict at the same time. And typically, the higher the number of parameters a model has, the higher the accuracy a given model can output and handle more diverse outputs with more diverse data. The drawback is that it's more computationally expensive as well to be able to train and will take longer, hence the linear relationship between hardware as well as AI model development. Now, in order to make your models better, here are the different types to do so. There's model stacking, and these are different types for model stacking. You can add more diverse data. You can combine models with multiple layers, and these are the steps to be able to do so. There are regularization techniques, and these are different types. There's data augmentation as well, and these are different techniques. Finally, there's hyperparameter tutoring, and these are the different techniques as well. Next, we got to export our model and put it in Unreal Engine 5, and we need to export our model in Onyx format. And this is how we put in our Works. computer vision model with our 3D model in Unreal Engine 5. And this is how we implement the blueprint configuration. And here is the raw C++ code. And this is how we account for synthetic data, such as adding in new objects and such for our given model to be able to further update. And here is a quick recap of everything we have gone through. Hey everyone, thank you very much for taking time to watch this. If you found this video helpful, be sure to feel free to please like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, please put them in the comment section. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.